edition of the Investigative Journal on uh, the Genesis uh, Communication Radio Network. And we're talking to Zvali, who has been a member of the family, the Order, for many, many years. She left ten years ago. We were talking about her induction ceremony at the Vatican and how all roads lead to the Vatican when, it call, uh, when we were talking about the Illuminati. And before I get into uh, the uh, the way they're organized, Zvali's going to tell you this is this organization that's incredible, just like a corporation coming down worldwide to America also. I just wanted to mention, uh, just to give you a short timeline to give you an idea, and Zvala, you might find this interesting too. Uh, after Pope John Paul I was killed, uh, and I say killed, uh, he, officially it was a heart attack, uh, it should be known that uh, in, he was only the Pope for 39 days, and during those 39 days he was trying to do one thing, and that was to reorganize and to clean up the Vatican Bank uh, to expose a number of the Freemason Masonic priests and other members of the church uh, that had uh, ties to the Freemasons and the Mafia. Uh, he had given a list to uh, Cardinal Jean Velo, which might have been a mistake because uh, there's some uh, shady dealings about this cardinal. But anyway, he gave a list to Cardinal Velo uh, regarding the number of people he wanted out. And this was going deep into the Vatican scandals, into their corruption, into probably the first layers of this Illuminati and many of these other things that are going on. Well, the day after he presented his list, he was found uh, dead in his uh, chambers. Uh, John Paul then took over, never did anything, protected everyone. Uh, the Vatican uh, Bank never was cleaned up, and uh, that's not fiction, though that's history. Uh, Zvali, it does go back to the Vatican. Tell us about this organization that you learned about. You were a mid-level worker in this uh, program or a mind programmer for years. Tell us about this organization that you learned about. Well, I learned about it just by, by being there and seeing people and talking to people. But um, basically, um, like you said, um, it is very much organized like a large international corporation. It, in that sense, the headquarters would be um, Rome, the Vatican, because that's considered the spiritual um, center of the world for the Illuminati. From there, um, the power bases go to Europe. There's uh, 12 men. They're called the 12 Lords or the 12 Fathers, and they each represent a country in Europe. Um, and of those 12, the, top, the three ruling it's a triumvirate is the UK, France, and Germany because those are those are the older, oldest houses. In the Illuminati, it's called the house, the German house, the French house, the UK house. Um, from there, America was considered a mission field, and so it was basically um, in the 1600s the first Illuminists started coming over, and they established so their their power base in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Now, it's considered the spiritual center for the Illuminati. And um, from there, um, they then, they, they divide the U.S. as time went on and as, as it, it became developed um, into seven regions. The East Coast, but the two huge divisions for the group are the East Coast region, which is east of Mississippi, and the West Coast region, which is west of the Mississippi. Um, Spiritual headquarters for East Coast are Pittsburgh, but the administrative headquarters are in Alexandria, Virginia. Um, on the West Coast, um, the spiritual headquarters are Portland, Oregon, and the administrative headquarters are San Diego, California. Now, you originally were in uh, uh, Virginia, then you moved to San Diego, correct? Yes, yes. I was first affiliated with Alexandria and then with um, with. San Diego. You know, you said that Pittsburgh was, a, you know, I've heard that too, Pittsburgh, the spiritual capital. It uh, was yeah. interesting to note that George Bush, right after he was elected, traveled to Pittsburgh and gave a, a huge speech to a Masonic lodge there. Uh, find that interesting. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not coincidence. <laughs> and then, okay. and then, then over, underneath the regional um, councils as they were, well, there's a national council for the U.S., of course, so overall them, 13 men, and under them are the regional councils, and underneath the regional councils, then you have your local councils, and underneath your local councils are going to be your, your um, what they call sister groups, or, or what most people consider cousins. And that's the lower levels, the ones yeah. carrying out some yeah. of the uh, MK yeah, Ultra that's... programs, other things like that. Well, yeah, but they use a lot of the principles of MK Ultra at, at Many of the levels, you know. I mean, these people are well versed in every aspect of behavioral science, 
um, physiology, human physi anatomy and physiology. I mean, they're, they're considered the scientists, as it were, of the occult world. Because we they, all... they, yeah. yeah, go ahead. I mean, they study it. They know it. They know it inside out. And they use it uh, and apply it. Now, you, you were a mid-level uh, trainer. You moved up the ranks quickly. Uh, tell us a little bit about what, uh, when you became an adult, I believe it was 22 years old, you began uh, working as a trainer, a mind programmer. Tell us what this is all about. And you're working specifically with members of the organization, correct? And in your capacity, yeah. members of the military in San Diego. Well, I actually started as a trainer when I was much younger. I started when, by the time I was seven, you know, I was being mentored in my role. Um, at the age of 12, I did become a full trainer, but I became a head trainer and sat on uh, the regional lead uh, leadership council at the age of 22. That's when I was overseeing uh, other trainers and hmm. helping, mentoring them and teaching them. And I hope now a lot of people are starting to probably thinking, and I did it first, uh, you know, how do you manage this? You have a life, you are a wife, uh, you are also married to someone in the uh, same group. Uh, tell us a little bit how this works. Because I know you grow up with a lot of mind control, and we don't need, we don't have time, I don't think, to go into yeah. specifically how they trained you as a youth, and I still think you, you feel some of the effects of it, as you were saying. But yeah. when you get to a point of uh, working for this group, how do you manage uh, both your day life and your night life, uh, which was with the Illuminati mostly in the, in the wee hours of the morning? Go ahead. I think the best analogy I can raise for that is you may have... You may be a little bit different when you're at work than when you're at home relaxing. Because most people learn to some degree to compartmentalize the different parts of their life. The only thing is when you're a group like this is you learn to compartmentalize to a much greater degree. So that um, it's almost like you can do things not just in the night, but I mean, sometimes, you know, I spend a month sometimes in Europe or, or over in Germany. So it was daytime too, but you learn that in, in that situation you act a certain way. But then, when you're not in that situation, you act a different way. So why you, are they so? Why are they so concerned about their children? I mean, they seem to be very concerned about how you grew up and others in your same role. Uh, about you know, why are they basically involved in so much of this training? That to me, like uh, you were involved in the twelve disciplines, all this other stuff. Tell me what their mindset is. I think they're. If you were to ask them, they would say that they're helping the child develop their potential. They don't see it as evil or what they see is helping the child develop their capabilities because all the training has a goal. They don't just say, oh, I'm going to I'm gonna do something that's painful just to hurt you. I mean, there's, they will do something painful because they're trying to induce an experience in the child. They believe okay. it's inducing enlightenment. Does that make All right, sense? Good. We're, we're gonna, yeah, it yeah. makes sense. We're going we're gonna to continue with that in the second yeah. half hour. Uh, get into some of the different areas the Illuminati is infiltrated in our country, it's your knowledge, on the Genesis Communication Radio Network.